Welcome to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson along with head football coach Terry Sims. The Wildcats win their home opener after four consecutive weeks on the road. 24-12 over Savannah State University in a dominating defensive performance in Daytona Beach in the rain coach, but it was nonetheless a great way to come home in grand style, a big win in front of the home crowd. It was. It was good to be home. It was good to be in, in front of our home crowd. It was good to have the band behind us. It, it was just an exciting day, a great atmosphere. You mentioned in your post-game comments uh, that everybody has seen you throwing the ball with Larry Brim. Uh, you were able to get Akevius Williams back on the track on the center, uh, first game of the year. Uh, but what we saw not was a passing attack, but a, a relentless ground game. And you grounded up uh, well over 318 yards rushing on the day uh, without Mike Jones, who did not play. Yeah, uh, you know, our, our, our words here, our philosophy here is, is we're, we're going to take whatever the defense gives us. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, with, with our running back core, it's next guy up. You know, Mike was out. He has a, you know, he had a small little ankle sprain. And we, we just didn't want a chance that we could have dressed him and, and, and played him if we needed to. But we felt like uh, with, with JT and, and Tupac there, and then we moved Cameron Rigby back uh, to running back, and he had a great day for us. Well, you were able to run a uh, running game by committee, but Mike, uh, well over 300 yards in the year so far. Uh, if you needed him, you could have used him, but Demaris Tompkins, well over 100 yards, 123 yards. Uh, coach, uh, and a 69-yard gallop that virtually put the game out of reach late in the third quarter. It was, and, and you know, that, that's JT, Mr. Steady. He, he's a guy that, that you always uh, think about. He's a guy that you can depend on. Whatever it is, pass protection, running the ball, you know, he, he'll do whatever we need him to do. Mm -hmm. And the guys always kid him about, you know, standing up on the gas when he's running because they, they don't think he's as fast as he is because he's one of the bigger backs that we have, but he can't run. Larry, Larry Brim uh, continues to throw the ball extremely well. Uh, you would have liked to see him run in certain occasions, but that two-headed quarterback monster uh, for you reared its head, and that's what you probably are going to be seeing and playing for the rest of the year, two quarterbacks, Akevius and uh, Larry Brown. We are, and, and you know, that's what I, I said you know, early in this season. Uh, we are a two-quarterback system. So you know, having Akivas back will, will definitely allow us to add that other part of our offense and, and, and continue to move forward. The Cats were operating uh, with all the cylinders working perfectly. Let's take a look now at the highlights. 24-12, the Cats win at home. Are we home now? Yeah. yeah. coming on Gibbons, flushed out to his left. Gibbons jukes, and he's tackled from behind, shy of the 25-yard line pass. Caught by the inside receiver at the 35. Loomis slips to the 30, still on his feet, and he's finally tagged down to the 20-yard line of keeper. Brim at the far side, Brim at the five, and he runs in for a touchdown, BCU. Pressuring off the left side, here come the Wildcats, and Gibbons is sacked back at the 40-yard line. Against Akevius Williams, steps up the pocket, runs near side, 45-50, 45-40, along the sideline at the 30. Akevius still tiptoeing inside the 20, down near the 15-yard line. Zone read, keeper by Williams at the 15-yard line, cuts out the 12, slips out of a tackle. He's inside the 10, and Williams lowers the shoulder down to the 6-yard line. Hold is down, the kick from Uriel Hernandez is true. Gibbons will keep it after a play action to Saxton. He's wrapped up and dropped for a big loss in his own 45-yard line. Handoff, jet sweep. Sweep out to the near side. Couple of jukes, nothing there. Gibbons takes the snap, keeps it, loses the football. A dog paw for the loose football at the 40 yard line. BCU says that it has it. And the Cats have the football. Picked up by Brown at the 20. Runs straight ahead, breaks tackle, 25, cuts near side of the 30. Frank Brown at the 35, the 40. Out of the 45, he's at the 50. Brown still running, and he's finally brought down at the Savannah State 40-yard line. Great return for the electrifying Boozy. That was a great job. Hand off up the middle, nice cut to the right side. Stiff over the 40-yard line. At the 45, Tompkins tight over the sideline. 35, 30, 25, 10. Tompkins will take it home. 
Well, we needed that, boys. We ever needed one. We needed that one. Snap to Givens. Hands it off Saxton. Stopped on the right side. And he'll be dropped to the 46-yard line. No game. There's two cats battling each other. The other a cat fight today. A cat fight. The Marsh cats and the Wildcats. Pressure comes Givens. Throws it. Tino Smith across the middle. Has the catch down to the 25-yard line. Had to get to the 24. We'll wait on the spot. They'll stretch it out. You called it. He's short by about half a yard. They'll give it to Tompkins again. Room up the middle. Tompkins at the 30 and then tripped up. Looks like he has a first down out to the 41. Hand off again. Tompkins spinning. He's at the 40. Tompkins at the 45. Lowers the shoulders. Another first down out to the Savannah State 49. Hands off right side. Cutting out to the left at the 41. A couple of jukes. There's another BCU first down. Low snap. Givens on a sweep. Slips out of a Howard tackle. And then the Wildcats greet him at the 37-yard line and punish him back to the 30. Hands it off. Lots of room. Tompkins near side at the 30. Dances out the 35. Lowers the shoulder. Spins ahead. He's got a first down to the 42. Snap to Williams. Three-step drop. Sprints out to his left. Akevius tucks at the 40. 45, 50, 45. And runs out of bounds to the 40-yard line. Designed roll out to the right. Akevius on the run. Throws. And it's caught. A first down for BCU. Williams hands it off. Now reverse. Along the far side. Quayshawn Burke to the 30. 25 to the 20. Cuts the far side of the 15. And he's pushed out of bounds inside the 10. Slot motion shovel pitch. Bird near side of the 10. Bird looking for the edge. He's got it. Touchdown, BCU. That's that speed of Bird. Takes the snap. Pressure up the middle. He steps up out of it, but then he'll be set. Drop down to the 37-yard line. It's deep drop. Sprints out to the left. Gibbons will be pushed out of bounds. It's sacked to the play. The ball turns over on downs. Maroon and gold prevails in Daytona Beach today. The final score, Bethune-Cookman 24, Savannah State 12. I told you we were going to bring it this week. We ain't losing no more rest of the season. Watch the road. On the road. From the Miak Swag Challenge to the Celebration Bowl, everyone is competing from start to finish. A Miak Championship is not only on the line, but so is a trip to the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Each game will count from the first to the last. With dominating offenses and powerful defenses, we leave it all on the field. And at the end of the road, only one team will be standing as the MEAC football champion. And we'll see you in Atlanta on December 16th. The biggest rivalry in HBCU sports is back on Saturday, November 18th. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and Florida A&M Rattlers return to the Camping World Stadium in Orlando for the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Be there for the 38th annual showdown, including the highly anticipated battle of the bands between the world-famous Marching Wildcats and Marching 100. Proceeds benefit scholarship programs at BCU and FAMU. Tickets are as low as $20. Get your tickets today at floridaclassic.org. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. The Cats are one and one in MIAC conference play with the 24-12 win in Daytona Beach over Savannah State. And Terry Sims, coach, uh, your football team played extremely well. Uh, you would, you, you missed about two or three scoring opportunities. Uh, one, uh, you got inside the red zone. Larry uh, tries to lob one over a linebacker at about the 12-yard lines. He could have run in for, for the touchdown. Uh, that was deflected, and uh, we give that one up in the red zone. Another opportunity we had, we down first and goal in the, in the red zone, I think about the three or four-yard line, two consecutive holding calls, and uh, I think we end up converting for a field goal there. But, but Coach, uh, we were very efficient on the day. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, in your post-game comments and here in the opening segment that we ran the ball and we took what the defense gave us. Uh, while the average fan may want to see you throwing the ball and imposing your will on teams, that really isn't what happens on the gridiron. You've really got to get and take what the defense will, will give up, right? Exactly. You don't, you don't want to continue to try and throw the ball if, you know, they're, they're dropping seven or eight guys. Right. You want to make sure that you are allowing yourself an opportunity to be successful. And we had numbers, you know, they played us with a five-man box a lot of times, which, you know, gave us running length. Mm -hmm. So we, it allowed us to get our backs on, in there and, 
get them through the, the line of scrimmage, and we got positive plays. So defensively, they came in looking to stop the passing game. Yes, they, they did. They, they looked to stop the passing game, and you can see on early downs, they would try to put another guy in the box to try to be cautious against the run, but they would run him out, you know, right before the snap or whatever. But our offensive line did a decent job on, on, on Saturday blocking, and, you know, I think our quarterbacks, for the most part, they both did a, a great job at reading. You know, they, they both missed some reads, and, you know, like you said, some of the plays that, that we missed, you know, they, they could have been touchdowns, but you know, that, that happens. One of the things that we did notice, uh, Coach, uh, teams like, like Savannah refuse to let you take the top off of the defense. Uh, is, is that by design that, 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 that there's an illusion that we want to throw the ball extremely deep on teams? I know we, we tried it once or twice Saturday, but that's really not what we attempt to do that many times, is it? No, it, it's really not. But people look at the, the weapons that we have at receiver okay. and, you know, they, they want to keep guys deep and they want to, you know, make sure that we don't get behind them. And I, I, I see where the thought process comes from yeah. because if, if you have guys like we have at receiver, you, you want to protect yourself against the deep ball. Okay, but so so that that opens up the underneath routes and, and the like because you got you do have so many weapons out there. Correct. It, it open up opens up the underneath routes, our, our screen game, and, and our running game. Mm -hmm. Well, now, running game, uh, Coach, you, you were managing to, to spread the ball. You had six different guys, actually seven guys that ran the football. Jamaris Tompkins, 14 carries for 135 yards on a day. Uh, Akevius Williams, and you mentioned last week as we talked about this game coming up that your meetings with Akevius, you were saying you don't have to get four games worth of rushing yardage in one game, and you didn't want him to get greedy. Ten carries for 102 yards, and he was – he was pretty strategic where he was able, uh, he got a lot of his, his yardage out of passing situations. He did, and, and that's the key. Was, you know, he, he, can, he can move the chains, you know, in, in our terminology. And that's, that's what you, you want to do. You, you want a guy in there that, that can change the pace of the game, and he's that guy. He, he'll go in, and, and if it's not there uh, throwing the ball, then he can pull the ball down and, and get you some positive yardage. He threw the ball eight out of 11 uh, for 58 yards. He was, he was very conservative throwing the football. Larry, on the other hand, six out of 16, one interception. That was the one in the red zone. Uh, coach, 14 out of 27 with one pick, 97 yards. Uh, and you were very conservative on the day throwing the football. Uh, continued to still spread the ball around. Uh, about eight different guys threw the ball. Tupac Ishmael uh, comes back. He was a little rusty after sitting out the week prior uh, with a jaw injury, but he, he'll get back in shape and you'll be ready with a week off to get him back. Coach, offensively, uh, with a week off, you've got to come up uh, and, and develop a game plan for probably one of the toughest defenses you're going to face in the year against South Carolina State next Saturday. We do. And, you know, South Carolina State's always uh, been a team with a, a tough defense, a, a, a scrappy defense, and we've always had grudge matches against those guys. Every year, it's a very, very physical football game, and we don't expect anything less this year. Okay. In just a few moments, we'll come back and we'll talk defense. Uh, the Cats played a very good defensive football game. We'll come back and we'll dive into that when we return. On the road, from the MEAC SWAC Challenge to the Celebration Bowl, everyone is competing from start to finish. A MEAC championship is not only on the line, but so is a trip to the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Each game will count from the first to the last. With dominating offenses and powerful defenses, we leave it all on the field. And at the end of the road, only one team will be standing as the MEAC football champion. And we'll see you in Atlanta on December 16th. The biggest rivalry in HBCU sports is back on Saturday, November 18th. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and Florida A&M Rattlers return to the Camping World Stadium in Orlando for the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Be there for the 38th annual showdown, including the highly anticipated battle of the bands between the world-famous Marching Wildcats and Marching 100. Proceeds benefit scholarship programs at BCU and FAMU. Tickets are as low as $20. Get your tickets today at floridaclassic.org. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. 
Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Welcome back to the Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson, along with head football coach Terry Sims. Wildcats win it at home in the open of 24-12 over Savannah State University. And the Cats are one and one in MEAC play. Uh, we are going to enjoy a week off before we host South Carolina State next Saturday here in Daytona Beach. Coach, coming into this football game, uh, Savannah State, you knew, was a well-coached football team and uh, had a mobile quarterback and uh, lost, actually, the week before at home, uh, had a chance to upset Florida a and had the ball first and goal at the one and just could not get in uh, to win the football game. And so you knew that they were going to, uh, to, to not beat themselves. Uh, did, did you know that you were going to virtually be able to shut them down and hold them to less than uh, 200 yards total offense? Well, uh, I, I felt like we could, and, and I knew that our defense has taken the, the lack, I should say, of stopping the run personal mm -hmm. these last few weeks, and, and they've been working hard on it. And I think, you know, them taking it personal, the, the coaches taking it personal, and everybody just putting a little bit more effort in, into the, 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 the discipline and the detail of stopping the run. I felt like we had a pretty good chance to stop their running backs and their quarterback because he was a mobile guy also. Going up against two teams the two weeks prior and giving up a lot of yards on the run, uh, these were two run-heavy teams, uh, FAU and Howard University, uh, two, two very, very good offenses that were going to get yardage on, on virtually every team that they would play. Uh, did that send mixed signals or wrong signals to, to maybe teams that will be scouting us? Well, I, I, I hope it does <laughs> because we, we want people to try and run the football on us because we, we think we have a pretty good run defense. You know, we, we played uh, a lot of football yeah. early on and we played some really good football teams early on. But I think it's going to be to our advantage as, as we carry on through our, our conference schedule. Well, in the week prior to uh, against Howard, we, we did. We went into that game missing three defensive linemen. Correct, correct. We, we had three guys out with, with, with injuries. And uh, when, anytime you miss a guy that's been playing for you early on in the season, it's a little rough because now you're playing another guy in his spot mm -hmm. that may not have the experience he has yet. But the, those guys that were replacements, uh, they have the experience now and they, they've had some you know, game time under their belts. So I think that it, it worked well for us on Saturday. And we actually got one of the guys back. Daniel Palmer was back on, on, on Saturday, and he played well. Okay. Okay. Now let's go through the list of tacklers. Coach, you still maintain that uh, if your free safety or one of your defensive backs is leading the team in tackles, that seems to be a problem. Dequan Richardson was your leading tackler on the day. However, uh, one of your linebackers was tied with him, Marquise Hendricks, with, uh, with seven total tackles on the day. You did get some sacks on the day, and that was done by uh, one of your guys who was a, a spy on the day, Deontay Mayo, with two sacks on the day. Yeah, you know, Mayo, Mayo is a guy that, that you know, we've kind of been uh, a little bit in limbo and trying to find an actual spot for him because he, he played safety before he got here. He gained a little weight. We moved him to the linebacker. Thought he might be a little small for linebacker, but he, he's turning out well because he's an aggressive guy. He's a guy that, that can, you know, rush the quarterback. He can come off the edge and, and do the things that, that we need that guy, that position to do. Well, one of the guys that has been playing steady football for you all year long and has finally committed, and you said this in preseason, that you were, you were anxious to see how he would respond, would be Deshaun Ray. Deshaun Ray on the day number 95, four tackles, got a sack. This guy's been steady. He has, and, and he's turning into a, a, a leader, uh -huh. you know, a guy that we can depend on. And, you know, we always knew he had it in him, but now he's actually showing it, and, and he's showing it through his play. 
uh, Kennedy and, and Duku got to start the other day in the secondary. He's playing steady ball. Coach, you can basically, in your secondary, you got about nine guys back there now that you can just reach back and say, hey, I need you there. Uh, that versatility allows you now uh, really the, the leverage to, to really just play different sets of coverages. And, and if one guy goes down, uh, you really don't lose much, do you? No, we don't. And, and that was part of our plan coming into this season to have some depth. Mm -hmm. And having that depth at, at, at safety right now is doing a, a world of wonders for us because we're, we're playing some three safety packages and we're allowed uh, we're allowing those guys to be able to come off the field and take a blow and not miss a beat on the field. Okay, and that's a good thing to have because as the season progresses, particularly after this week, uh, when we enjoy that off week, we're going to be running completely for the next seven weeks uh, as we move into uh, the crux of conference play and our goal of getting to Atlanta. We'll come back in just a few moments. We'll take a look around the conference and talk about this off week as we really get ready to ramp up uh, for the meat of our conference schedule. We'll be back in just a few. On the road, from the MEAC SWAC Challenge to the Celebration Bowl, everyone is competing from start to finish. A MEAC Championship is not only on the line, but so is a trip to the new Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Each game will count from the first to the last. With dominating offenses and powerful defenses, we leave it all on the field. And at the end of the road, only one team will be standing as the MEAC football champion. And we'll see you in Atlanta on December 16th. The biggest rivalry in HBCU sports is back on Saturday, November 18th. The Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and Florida A&M Rattlers return to the Camping World Stadium in Orlando for the Florida Blue Florida Classic. Be there for the 38th annual showdown, including the highly anticipated battle of the bands between the world-famous Marching Wildcats and Marching 100. Proceeds benefit scholarship programs at BCU and FAMU. Tickets are as low as $20. Get your tickets today at floridaclassic.org. In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MEAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Welcome back to the Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson along with head coach Terry Sims. The Cats are one and one. We opened up after four games on tour. Uh, on the road, we opened up at home with a 24-12 win over Savannah State. The Cats are at 500, one and one in league play and a week off. Uh, coach, this week off, uh, this time last year, Coach, uh, we probably needed to have some transplants, some prayer meetings, and everything else to get to get healthy. And we never did get healthy until probably the last three games of the season. But right now, so far so good. Only some minor bruises. Uh, uh, as we sit here now, Coach, uh, this off week, we only lose Kevin Thompson for the year uh, with a broken collarbone. Uh, we get a chance to get him back next year, of course. Uh, a few bruises. Uh, Mike Jones, you sat him out. Uh, Saturday and you get him back. Uh, he could have gone had he had he had he uh, not had you not elected to sit him. Uh, Archivius comes back after sitting out uh, for some academic reasons. And he's ready to roll now. Uh, so far after after the first four and a half five games of the year, what do you think? I, I think we're we're maybe not where we want to be re record wise, but I think operationally we're, we're fine. But as an offense, a defense, and a special teams unit, I think the guys are, are, are picking up everything that the coaches are trying to get to them. And I think they're putting the effort out when they get on the field. Okay. Okay. The, the game at Howard University, the game you felt we should have won. Uh, the game at uh, FAU, 
we understand that the two FBS games, uh, we went into those games with a competitive disadvantage, so to speak. However, that Howard game is the one that got away from us. We talked privately about that, and, uh, and the team knows that. But now, that behind us, uh, we're, we're on the journey. We are, and, and you know we're going to take them one game at a time, and we're going to prepare for one team at a time, and not try to look too far ahead. We we not we're not concerned about what's ahead of South Carolina State. We're we're going to start with this open week. We're going to get some guys healthy, and we're, we're going to go back to our, our fundamentals and technique during practice. And we'll take a couple days and just do that, and, and then we'll get started on South Carolina State. Let's talk about open week. Sam McLaren, our, our legendary coach, said one year open beat us, you know, and, and, and how do you navigate uh, as a veteran coach the open week? Because sometimes that off week does more damage than good. It does, and, and, and I, I've been a, a around, a, you know, long enough and I've been a part of enough staffs where, you know, you, you say, well, we're going to give them the week off and then you come back rusty. Then you, you have coaches that say, well, we're going to practice the whole week and then you never get anybody healthy. So you, you have to find that, that happy medium in there and, and make sure that you get some practice in and that's what we're going to do. We're going to practice until Wednesday mm -hmm. and then we'll give the guys a couple of days off where they can just get some treatment and get healed up and we'll get back to work on Sunday on our regular schedule. And you hit the road? What about recruiting? Yeah, all of our coaches, they'll hit the road Wednesday going recruiting uh, as soon as we're done with practice and get a couple of days, you know, recruiting some junior colleges and some of the coaches recruiting uh, some of the local areas. Okay, let's take a look now around the league. Uh, this past week, of course, a big one was in uh, Orangeburg, South Carolina, Coach. North Carolina a t remains unbeaten, 21-7 over South Carolina State in a grudge match. That was a much closer football game than the score indicated. Uh, and they are always close football games between those two teams. Uh, of course, we win 24-12 over Savannah State. FAMU loses at the end on Thursday night to North Carolina Central in a football game that FAMU had a chance to win with about three minutes to go in the football game. They did. And, and you know, that, that was my point last week when I said uh, it's a lot of parity in this league this year. And, you know, not that any team is any better or any team is any worse than they were last year. I, I just think all of the coaches are doing a great job recruiting and they're doing a great job preparing their teams. And the players are doing a, a fantastic job executing, you know, what their coaches are teaching them. Well, everybody else is, is uh, ready to play this Saturday except us. We'll take the week off. Uh, our fans, hey, we, we expect you to take the week off with us. But we'll have the uh, Terry Sims show this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. at the 90 Degree Sports Grill here in Daytona Beach. Come on out and join us. Ask questions. Uh, and we'd love to have you there. Uh, we'll see you next Saturday, 4 p.m. at the Jungle Municipal Stadium as the Cats host the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Until then, for Terry Sims and the Wildcats, I'm Lynn Thompson. We'll see you then at the Jungle.